Hi everybody and welcome back to my basement once again. Today we're gonna talk about data storage, because if you are a video maker, drone pilot like me, you produce hundreds of gigabytes per month. And all of these videos will fill up your devices pretty quickly. So where do you store all of this data? There are three main ways. First of all is using external hard drives. Second is using a cloud service. Third is using a NAS, a network attached storage. Each method has its pros and cons. I have been using external hard drives in the past. I started with one 5 terabyte and then gradually bought more as the data increased. This is very cheap because nowadays a 5 terabyte drive is like 100 bucks. It's very easy to use. And also privacy wise, these stay with you. If you hide them, nobody knows they even exist. But they are also very, very limited, especially once you start having more than one because every time I need to access some videos is a mess. They are not organized. The data in here is just folders and subfolders and I have to scrub through each one of them. Reading and writing is very slow and if I have to transfer files to someone else, I need to access my laptop and manually send them. And reading them with a smartphone is kind of a mess. Also, they are kind of unsafe because with time the disk degrades, eventually you're not gonna be able to read them anymore. At that point, you lose the 5 terabytes of data you have in them. Cloud storage has kind of the opposite pros and cons compared to external hard drives. It's still pretty easy to set up. Actually, it's probably the easiest. The speed depends on your internet connection, but if you have 1 gigabit or more, you're gonna be uploading files faster than you can transfer to a local drive like this, which is crazy. Also, it's much more convenient because all of your files get organized usually into one big album. It's much easier to look for what you need. It's much easier to share with someone else because you just create a link and everybody is ready to access. You can access from multiple devices very easily and always have access to your data if you are traveling, if you are away. Also, cloud services have much better data loss protection because if this drive fails, you lose everything. If their drive fails, they have already backups of your data, they change the drive and you don't lose anything. So if you have important files, stuff you really don't want to lose, probably is a much better idea to store it on the cloud. But all of this convenience comes at a big price. It's gonna be by far the most expensive way to store your data, probably even more than 10x uh, external hard drive's price. Especially if you need to store stuff in the long run, you not only have plants depending on how much data you need, but you also have recurring payments. So every year, every month, you have to pay. And usually with time, your data amount grows. So you start with the one terabyte, you go into the two terabytes, eventually you fill up 16 terabytes and they don't have consumer plans. After that, you have to go into the enterprise. For 16 terabytes of storage, usually they charge around a thousand bucks per year. And usually, you need to store for multiple amounts of years. So after, I don't know, four years, 4,000 bucks. It becomes very expensive in the long run. And also another con is usually they are encrypted and your data is safe, but you are always entrusting all of your work and data into someone else's hands. So it can be a concern sometimes. And lastly, we have the NAS, which is the topic of this video. Basically, this is like hosting your own cloud service at home. This combines all of the pros of the other two methods and is very, very cost effective as well. It may be a little bit more expensive at first, but over the years, it's gonna be much cheaper than storing stuff on cloud, while being also much more convenient than external hard drives. And having to store all of this data, often share it with clients, and also I need to access it from all of my devices. I have been looking into a NAS solution for quite a while, but I've always been hesitant because historically they have been quite harder to set up. But I was very, very happy when Ugreen contacted me, asked if they could sponsor this video, and if I wanted to check out their new DXP 4800 Plus. NAS, which they claim to be the most beginner-friendly NAS out there. So really, I want to put it to the test and check out if that claim is true. In the box, you get another box, accessory box with warranty and a manual, two keys to lock your hard drives, 150 watts power adapter, two Cat7 Ethernet cables, screwdriver with screws, 
and two cooling pads for your SSD. The NAS itself, which comes super well protected. And boom, let's talk about specs. First of all, the quality is very, very nice. It's all made in aluminum. It feels very sturdy. In the front, you have the four disk drives, the on button, a SD card slot, USB-C plug and a USB-A 3.2. At the back, you have more ports, a HDMI, because you can use this as a media center, a USB 3.2 and two 2.0, two Ethernet ports, one is 10 gigabits, one is 2.5. You can connect this NAS into two different networks, which is super cool. A little reset button and the power input. And at the top, you have a magnetic dust filter. At the bottom, there is a little door with two slots for laptop RAM memory sticks. It comes with 8 gigabytes. You can upgrade it, of course. And here you have slots for two M2 SSD. The heart of this machine is a 12th gen Intel Pentium 5. Core, and it's fast enough to run a lot of things we're gonna see later. Also, if you click on these little buttons, you see the hard disk tray comes out. You can put a wide variety of hard disks. 2.5 inches, 3.5 inches, which are recommended. And like other brands, they don't lock you out of hard disk. You can put basically whatever hard disk you want in here. They have a compatibility list. And of course, if you use hard disks made for NAS, is gonna be much better and reliable. The maximum capacity is 136 terabytes, which is crazy for such a small machine. It's four 30 terabytes hard disks and two 8 terabytes SSD. Time to set it up. At the back, you have a little clasp to open it. Lay your drive flat like this and close the tray. It's done, ready to go in. Boom. I'm gonna use four 4 terabytes drives. They are made specifically for NAS use. After installing all the drives, just connect the NAS with the Ethernet to your access point and it should be ready to go. Let's turn it on. Setting up the NAS is gonna be incredibly easy. You can do it from your laptop or phone. It has a couple of different procedures. I have done it with my laptop. You just go on this website, it finds the NAS in your LAN network, and basically you just create an admin account to manage and secure the machine. And after that, it does 90% of the setting up automatically. And after initializing, it logs you in into the operating system of the NAS. It's called Ugreen OS, and I have to say it looks super, super polished. Here you can download apps, make it do many stuff, but the first thing you do after booting it up is you have to select what kind of storage pool you want to create. And here you have different options. It's super nice that this describes what each option does. So even if you're not familiar with RAID configurations, you know what you're doing. I chose RAID 5 because I get to keep using three drives as memory and one drive as backup. And this way, even if one drive fails, it tells me I can replace it and all my memory is saved. And if you have a SSD, you can set it up as memory or as cache. I just discovered that you need two SSDs to be able to both have read and write cache. If you only have one SSD, it's gonna be only read cache. I also love the fact that they integrated a very extensive wiki that's gonna tell you everything you need to know about the various functions of the NAS. After setting up the storage, you have this little assistant in the bottom corner that's gonna tell you the next steps to do, which is first to create a folder to upload your files to, and after that it tells you to learn about the Ugreen Link remote access, which is the way to connect to your NAS when you are outside of your LAN network. I'm gonna now try and copy my travel videos into the NAS so I can have a backup, but also I want to try editing straight from it without having the files physically on my computer. You have a couple of ways to upload your files. You can either drag and drop the folder into the web application, but a much more convenient way is using your computer built-in file manager to find devices on the network and just drop a folder into your personal folder. It's just like transferring files into your computer. You can check the transfer speed into the storage application. It's doing around 100 megabits average, and it's gonna be already faster than uploading to cloud services, at least for me that I live in the countryside. I don't have a very fast connection. And you can see the total utilization of all hard drives is like 14%, which is nothing. It can go so much faster. I am probably bottlenecked 
by my LAN network, which is not up to spec for this machine. In an ideal condition, you can go up to 700 megabytes per second with this system, which is maybe as fast as reading from your internal memory. Actually, I want to do an experiment. I have stopped the transfer and I'm gonna try uploading directly from an SSD to check the real speed of the drives. Let's copy the data, it's just like a regular computer, let's put it in the personal folder, boom, confirm, and let's check the speed. And finally we are getting 456 megabytes per second. It's varying depending on the operation is doing, but boom, it's much, much faster than my poor LAN connection. And I believe it's still bottlenecked by the SSD and not by this machine. We are at about 50% utilization rate. And while the files are transferring, let's open the photo album up because this NAS has a locally trained AI filter that's gonna look for phases, for text, for buildings, for whatever you're looking for. And it works without connecting to the internet. So your file data is stored here if you are concerned about privacy. In order to do that, you need to download and enable the local AI. Finally, all the files have finished uploading. I can see all of the photos I took during the travel. They are super nice, but also it automatically divides them into albums. So you can see recent files, people, which is an AI feature. It works super nice. It picked them up. Wow, it picked me and my girlfriend up. No problem. And it's also looking for us into videos. This is gonna consume a lot more resources, but it's local and it uses the internal processor. You need to give it a little bit of time. And it's gonna make a little bit more noise during this operation, but luckily, this machine is incredibly silent. I can feel the heat coming out of it, but the noise level is super, super quiet. The only thing I can hear is the clacking of the mechanical hard drives. And since my photos have GPS data, you can see them into the map. For example, I found a nice picture I want to share with my girlfriend. I just go into more, share, and this creates a link I can send there so she can download the photo and only the photos I select. You can have a lot of control, so internal users or public. You can have a validity, so the link expires after that. I'm gonna say permanent. And you can put a random password, the custom password, really, really granular and cool. Also, if you don't want people to download your photo, you can just send files to visualize only. Copy the link, I'm gonna send it myself so I can show you from my phone. Boom, the file arrived on my phone and I can show you connect instantaneously to the NAS via Wi-Fi, it's not LAN. And then it says, I have sent this photo, boom, let's click on it, loads instantaneously, but it cannot be downloaded because I blocked that in the settings. That's super, super cool. Let's now try editing the files directly from the NAS. Boom, the files are loaded and it looks like they read no problem. It's not, of course, as smooth as having them on the computer, but it's pretty, pretty usable. Look at this. The latency, super, super fast. I am on Wi-Fi, I am not connected to the machine and my LAN network is not really the best. So this is not the best case scenario. It's totally editable. And it even reads big Mavic 4 videos in 4K, no problem. Let's also check out the phone app, which does the same thing as the desktop one, but in a more mobile-friendly interface. You can still access all of your files. It's like having them on your phone, actually, maybe even faster. You can open them. You can also create an automatic backup of your phone photos into the NAS. So if you lose your phone, your photos are safe. Super nice, just like cloud storage. I have now disabled the Wi-Fi network, so I'm gonna be on mobile data. Let's try connecting to the NAS this way. And boom, it connects over the internet. I don't have a lot of signal here, but I can still access everything. Wow, this is like wherever you are, you have 136 terabytes of storage into your phone. And you can also backup remotely into your NAS at home. For example, if you are on travel. And talking about security, you have a ton of options here as well. So you can make your data very safe from external attacks. This is just the basics. More advanced users will be able to do much more with it because really it's a computer. You can run virtual machines on it. You can run servers. You can also change the operating system without voiding the warranty, which is a nice move by Ugreen. 
And that's all for today. Remember to like, subscribe and comment on this video. Let me know what you think about this NAS. And also, I'm very curious to know what are your solutions to store a ton of data. Also, if you're interested about this machine, you can find a 20% off discount into the description. So stay safe and happy storing. Bye.